We are on the air with the <laughs> sports philosopher. It's Christmas time, so we're going to get the, some Christmas picks here on the 14th, uh, I guess the 15th week of the uh, NFL, NFL. 15th. But uh, I guess the 14th game. 14th game here. So let's get right to, uh, right to it. What do you think about CP3 coming to the Clippers? Oh, Chris Paul. Oh, I think if you're a Laker fan, maybe this is why Kobe Bryant's wife just announced that she's divorcing him. Today. Is that right? It just broke in the paper. Oh, my God. She smiled. That. He's responded. My sister said, what took, him, what took her so long? But that's a whole different topic. I think the Lakers are crumbling. I think the Clippers are finally getting the best of Big Brother. And I think that David Stern should retire and resign because he is obviously you know, a bitter, bitter old man. And he doesn't deserve to be the commissioner. Of so this is breaking news to me. So how big a rock do you need to I'm get your I'm always breaking gal? news to you, Pete. How, how big a rock do you need to get your wife every you know, five know. years, ten years to keep, keep, it, keep it going? I guess if you cheat on your wife, it takes more than a $4 million diamond ring, doesn't it? So Kobe... Jump from the frying pan into the fire. There you go. Good metaphor. <laughs> All right. But, hey, we're here to talk about football, America's greatest game. Hey, it was worth it just to break that story on Kobe Bryant, people. Unbelievable. Let's get, let's get to the gridiron. Okay. And What's the first I, game? And I understand uh, you either we get the Green Bay, Kansas City, and you are, are leaning toward Green Bay. I am. And normally I wouldn't do something like giving 14 points on the road. It's a lot of uh, points. But uh, I, we have three games I'm picking this week. That's the first one. Green Bay is favored by 14 on the road because the Chiefs are, I call, I call this one of those can't compete games. That's my name for it. Sometimes you get a football game where the underdog just isn't structured to compete in the game. And uh, the Chiefs are on their third string quarterback. Uh, they've only had two touchdown drives in their last 52 possessions. They have the worst offensive football, obviously. All right, all right. So I don't think they're going to score and more than six, seven, ten points in the game. Didn't they just lose the a coach, too? And they lost their coach, yeah. right? And so and they got other injuries up and down the line. They're all pro running back. has been out all year. They'll score six, seven, ten points at the most. The Packers are a lock for something in the 30s. Uh, I think even a game like 27 to 9 is still a cover for the Packers, and I all think right. that's about the worst they can do. I'm looking for something along the lines of 34 to 7, an easy cover for Green Bay. Green Bay to go to 14 0 on their way to perhaps. A perfect season. Take the Packers, relax, and watch the Chiefs punt the ball eight, nine, ten times during this game. All right, there you go. Going with the uh, world champions now. We got an interesting game here: New Orleans and Minnesota. I understand the over/under on this is fifty and a half. Yeah, the over is the, is the is the play here. Uh, it's a fun game. The Vikings. You are the king of the overs. I am the king of the overs, among other things. And uh, we've been hot on that particular type of bet all year. Fifty and a half just isn't much in a Saints game. They always push their foot on the gas. Drew Brees is passing uh, two times for every one time the Saints run. They got a good running game anyway, but uh, their passing game is fantastic. Uh, last week they played an under game because they played a team with a very good defense that likes to run the ball a lot. Uh, none of that applies to Minnesota. Minnesota likes to pass the ball with their rookie quarterback Christian Ponder to Percy Harvin and some of those fast wideouts, Visante Shanko. Uh, Adrian Pearson may or may not play. Minnesota likes can score, and they can't stop anybody. Last week they played a game against Detroit. 34-28. That's a typical score of Lion games. And, of course, the Saints average about, uh, I think, 33, 34 points a game. And a typical Saints game goes deep into the 50s every time. I think you'll be in that game on the over from start to finish. Even if you fall behind early on that game spread-wise, there's always a great chance to catch up with what I call over chaos. Chaos in the over. 15 half is a good number. Don't bet the house, but bet. And that's right, Breeze is going for a record or so. I mean, oh, he's, he's up there. Several so. records. He's he, going for the uh, most consecutive games throwing a touchdown pass record. He'll break that record of John Unitas sometime next year of 47 straight games. He's going for the pass completion record in one season, and he's also going for the most yards passing. Dan Marino's record of 5,084 yards in the season from 1984. That record is, is, is virtually done because at least three quarterbacks this year are going to break that record, and Breeze will probably have the most yards. All right, let's move to maybe the most interesting game because we're talking about the Mile High Messiah. We're talking about Denver yeah. versus New England and Brady. Uh, six and a half, Denver's favored, or no, Denver's an underdog. They're getting six and a half. You know, where do you come down on that one? Well, as you said, uh, the, the Mile High Messiah, Tim Tebow, God's quarterback, <laughs> right? The Broncos are a six-and-a-half-point favorite, and I was uh, talking to you earlier today that the Broncos have been very lucky in this uh, winning seven of eight since Tebow took over. they played good football, but they've been lucky. The reason I like Denver in this Well, God's game, a lucky guy. I God's, mean... God's very lucky. He's in charge. But uh, I like the Broncos in this game, not because I'm totally on the Tebow bandwagon, although I am pretty much on it. I'm not snowed by what Tebow's done. I just think the number is wrong. I think that spread should be New England 
as a two-point favorite, one-and-a-half-point favorite, three-point favorite, something like that. Six-and-a-half is just too high. Denver's got a lot of ways to win this game. Six-and-a-half is a big chunk. They don't have to win this bet to cover. They could lose the game by one, two, three, four, five, or six points and still cover. They play good defense. They run the ball well. They could eat the clock. Uh, if they're behind, they could, even if they don't catch up and win the game, I could see Denver like coming close and losing a game like 24-21 uh, and still covering. A lot more ways to cover in that game than, than New England just having to blow Denver out in Denver, where the air is thin and the hopes of uh, teams coming in there to win are equally thin. Mm. I say take the six and a half points and you'll have a lot of fun with that one. And if Tebow can win yet another game against Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, and the New England Patriots, well, that'll be the, not only the lead story on the sports page, but that'll be the lead story on page one of your daily newspaper on Monday morning because this Tebow thing is sweeping the country like wildfire. Take the Broncos, take the six and a half points, laugh all the way to the bank. And there you go, folks. And the sports philosopher has been on fire, and it continues to roar here up in the mountains in Monrovia. We'll see you next week, Mr. Sports Philosopher. Always a pleasure, Pete. And to Kobe Bryant, maybe it's time to retire, young man. <laughs>